Welcome, all you shiny, happy people. It's the Rev Dare Cloud. Ask yourself, why are you here? First things first. Reverend. Adject. Worthy of adoration. Reverend. Synonym. Sublime. Sacred. Shit, that's me. This is who I am and what I write about. Or in this case, what I make videos about. Horror, gonzo journalism, books, glam metal, movies, paranormal, art, retro gaming, snakes, trains, Star Wars, playing guitar, the army, or anything else I deem worthy throughout my daily life. If you write about the same, chances are I'll share your post or share your video. Sometimes I write about my rather interesting and unfortunate past. If you played a part in that, I may speak of you from time to time. I will never use your name or give out any identifiers to the public. To boot, I'm a marching, picketing, leftist, liberal, gun-owning, pro-choice, pro-LGBTQ+, pro-marijuana legalization, pro-union, disabled veteran, registered Democrat who confuses the polarized and dumbfounded by spouting indecipherable political rhetoric defined by my personal agenda. No likey, no read, or no watch. If someone does their drama math by putting two and two together because they insisted on being a social media martyr, well, that's on them. No likey, no read, no watch. To be honest, trial and error as an independent author has led me to believe there is no such thing as bad publicity. Drama sells books. Make me money. I hope you came here with good intentions. And now for today's sermon. It's titled, Art and the Coming Storm. What role will the upcoming gaggle of fascists play in our future creation? I just can't help it. Over my developing adult years, I've interpreted most forms of popular art to be clueless, ignorant. Of course, when you hear an interview with one of these artists, you know exactly why. They're fake. Many, like Kid Rock, <laughs> the goofiest name in all professional music history, grew up in suburban, gated neighborhoods, only pretending to be the hard ass or an abused victim of the system most claim to be. Their place in life and money connections lifted them to unearned, instant fame, preying on the sensitive ears of their target audience. Their place in life and money connections lifted them to unearned instant fame preying on the sensitive ears of their target audience by pandering to the lowest common denominator. I don't think Kid Rock attached himself to Donald Trump during this last election. No, I believe it was the other way around. Rock, originally a failed suburb rocker, then a failed suburb white rapper, took a shopping trip to the thrift store to create the white trash mask he now proudly wears. Longing for the fame of other Detroit music royalty, he pales to Eminem's talent or ICP's loyalty. He was planting the seeds of mini MAGA long before the great Cheeto's morning, slightly stinging, brain fart of semi-genius. I'm not sure how the great golden turd of tenements qualified Mr. Rock for such high appointment, but I can assure you he has a dent in the back of his throat that could line up directly with the shape of Trump's penis. So accurate it could hold up in a court of law as forensic evidence when the man chokes his final shroom, oh doom. I bet Kid Rock's tonsils look like a hood of a car after a hailstorm. I'm not meaning to pick on Mr. Rock by any means. It's been rumored over the years that Taylor Swift's father purchased her first million albums for her. I'd hate to think that. She has the talent, compassion, and physical beauty to be a star overnight in a pre-internet world. Nowadays, everyone with a half-ass talent, a laptop, and a fucking Snapchat filter can be an internet sensation at the drop of a hat. I mean, it's only cheating if you get caught, T. Someone's gotta buy all that cat litter. We've all enjoyed quite a bit of creative freedom over the last couple of decades when it comes to our internet contributions. I can't help but feel that freedom will soon come to an end once this upcoming administration's Project 2025 comes into play. Begin to expect meta apps to deny your risky posts much more frequently after the first of the year. 
Authors, Amazon is about to get super picky about our submissions. Hell, it wouldn't surprise me if some of those denials are accompanied by a strongly worded government email or a knock at the door. I'm not kidding. Anyone who believes this is an exaggeration of things to come is underestimating the power of a fear-mongering, religiously weaponized leader with an already frightening following. Breaking into the Capitol and taking a dump on the floor is pretty psychotic in many folks' books. To my progressive sympathizers, friends, and readers, take your children to the dark part of the museum. Show them the blood, the demonic figures, the oppression, and the carnage on canvas created mostly during periods of government oppression and unprovoked violence toward those who stood their ground. For most, art was their only weapon, leaving behind a trail of breadcrumbs for future societies. They did not create it for fame or shock value. They did so in protest. Their only voice, a brush, canvas, and a stretcher. Unfortunately, most of this expression failed to be identified as a warning signal and turned hot topic spank fuel for fake goth capitalists. It's the same thing Kid Rock, Donald Trump, and Hulk Hogan have done to the uneducated, unwashed by choice masses of the deep southern United States. All three are failing influencers looking to turn a quick buck with shit songs, shit bibles, and chemically created yet somehow withering muscles. They're society's worst scratch and sniff sticker passed around to nose blind idiots begging for inclusion. I weep for some of them until I don't. Buckle up America, we're about to have one hell of a renaissance. Warm up those quills, oh scribblers of the coming revolution. Preach truth, tote jokes, and shoplift Amazon.